Good afternoon and welcome, friends and family of Center for Spiritual Living Ocala. I am Reverend Cindy Grimes, and I'm so glad that you are joining us this afternoon for our broadcast. If this is your first time being with us, um, well, even if it's not, I think it's always great to let people know who we are and what we value in our vision and mission. So we'll go right to that. And so at the Center for Spiritual Living Ocala, these are the things that are important to us. These are our values. And number one on our list is the idea of spiritual growth and practice. It is the whole reason that we come together at the Center for Spiritual Living is to learn and to grow together and to learn from one another and to practice the spiritual principles that we learn. And uh, we're gonna be learning a lot of uh, new ideas, um, not just uh, today, this month, but, but ongoing throughout the year. And I'm really excited about our new program. So spiritual growth and practice is the first thing. Then there is love. And that's what we're talking about today and for the rest of the year is the idea of love, but not just any love, revolutionary love. And uh, so you'll get a really good idea of what that means, what, what I mean when I say that. We value appreciation. Um, we value community. We know that this practice of revolutionary love happens in community, and so I'm excited to talk about that. We value freedom of expression and creativity. We value health and wholeness of not just ourselves, but uh, the planet. We value generosity, and we value financial well-being. And our mission at Center for Spiritual Living Ocala is the same as the mission of the larger organization of Centers for Spiritual Living, and that is to provide spiritual tools for personal and global transformation. And our purpose is to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. And we say awaken because the fact is, or what we believe, is that we come into this world already spiritually perfect and divine. And we forget that when we come into the world and this experience. And so our job or our role at Centers for Spiritual Living is to help people remember the truth of, of who they are. And our vision is a world that works for everyone. And that means the world works for me and it works for you and it works for your loved ones and it works for people that we don't even know. And so that is what we are about. And so we're doing something new. We're changing things up a little bit. We're starting with a, a new program and our format is going to be just a little bit different. We will always be starting with a prayer or some kind of a spiritual practice. And then we're going to go into more like a not panel discussion, but a circle conversation around the different ideas that we're gonna be talking about. So I will be inviting different members of our congregation of CSL Ocala community, as well as the larger community of Ocala, Marion County, and our larger community of Centers for Spiritual Living. So we may have guests that are from all over the country or all over the world for different portions of, uh, of the program that we will be doing. So I'm going to just invite everyone in for a moment here so you can see. And, and these are folks you know because they're some of our practitioners. And there is Norma Anderson. Hello, Norma. Hello. How are you hello, doing? How are you doing, Reverend Cindy? Good, I'm good. Well. Bringing in Donna Davis, our other Hi. practitioner. And hello. I'm going to bring in, hello, Donna. And also bring in Corinne Dean for today, who is a member of the board at Center for Spiritual Living Ocala and one of my cohorts in peace building with <laughs> Circle Up Center for Practical Peace Building. And so I just want everybody to see your beautiful faces. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. For those who don't know, Donna and Norma are back in New York City mm -hmm. on the front lines of COVID yet once again. Once again. <laughs> And so thank you for what you're doing. I'm on yes. my lunch break. <laughs> oh. She's on her lunch break. Isn't that awesome? That she's <laughs> just taking her lunch break to hang out with us. And, and of course. I love pray it. us in and uh, to chat with us about this, uh, this idea of revolutionary love. So I'm going to take all of us out, let you pray us in, and then I'm going to bring us back in. Okay. All right. So. 
Ah, welcome everybody. Oh, I so need this moment. Mm. I invite you now to just get centered in this space. As we do the invocation, just dropping into that space of divine love. I recognize the allness of the one, knowing that this one first cause, divine creativity, divine life itself moves, lives, and is a part of everything. It is everyone, everything, every being, everything on this planet, everything above, beyond this planet, everything that ever existed, ever shall exist. It is this one expressing its magnificence as all of us. And I know that since I sit in this space, in this office, in this state, that I too am a part of the oneness of God. And since I'm a part of the oneness of God, I know that's true for every other person. We are all magnificent divine love, creative love, living and breathing as human beings in this experience we call life. It is from that space that we are remembering our divine nature of love, our divine nature of being that thing that is unconditional love. And today, as we have this conversation around revolutionary love, stepping into that new idea, that new time that is coming forward now, the freshness that is happening after the rain, after the storm, there's always that moment of reconstruction. We are coming back into that space of remembering that we are divine love in this moment. And even as we deal with the aftermath of that, which is COVID or anything else that is a challenge for the human race, we know that all of it is unfolding beautifully in divine love. And so I sit back, I relax and I let it flow just as easily as the breath comes to me and my heart beats, so too that which I am, that is that love unfolds and I am remembering who I am. I'm encouraging anybody within the sound of my voice to remember who they are too, as that divine spark, first cause that started it all. And as we remember and connect with each other through this love, we're making a change in the world. We're seeing humanity as what it really truly is beauty and wholeness and creativity and abundance and love. And with that, I release all of these thoughts into the law, knowing that the law is always working for the highest and best of each and every one of us. And life is here for the unfoldment of me and of you. I release it saying, and so it is. Ashe. Namaste. And so it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You just always pray so beautifully. It's just mm -hmm. how, how can the conversation not just flow with perfection after a, a lead in like that? Stepping in, stepping into that space. Once you become aware of the space, then you can come and have the conversation from that space. It changes everything. Yes, yes. And so it is. So thank you so much. Well, let me bring the other ladies on into the stream. And do you think you're going to be able to hang out for a bit, Donna? I'm going to try my best. Sometimes the Wi-Fi can be spotty. So if I drop off, just know I'm here with you in spirit. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you, ladies, everybody for, for joining us this morning, and as well as all the folks that are online with us. It's just, it's so awesome. I feel a new energy, a new excitement. And so I've shared with you all, obviously, you guys on the screen, that's why you said hello, but are, are, are with us today. But I want to let other folks know how things are changing up just a little bit in this program that we're doing that I'm going to just pop up on the screen here that is called the Revolutionary Love Project. And it came from a book or it comes from a book called See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love by a woman named Valerie Kaur, 
who is a, an attorney, she is a civil rights activist, she is a mother, and she is a woman of the Sikh faith. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Sikhs, you may know their, their men wear turbans. They keep their hair long and they wear turbans. And um, they come primarily from India. Um, and they are often mistaken for Muslim. Mm. Uh, but they're not. It's, it's, a, it's a separate faith. And it is very, very much like what we teach in Centers for Spiritual Living. Oh, it looks like Norma disappeared. What happened? <laughs> we lost Norma. Again. Yeah, very spotty. Oh, yeah. oh well, well. Old well. buildings. I'm sure she's trying to get back on. Yeah, yeah I hope, she, I hope she can. We'll, we'll bring her back in. There All she right. is. Hey, Norma. Hey. <laughs> so, what about Donna's internet? And it's mine. Yeah, so I was just uh, talking about revolutionary love and introducing Valerie Carr and realized, oh, Norma's not here. She just disappeared. So anyway, welcome back. <laughs> so as I was saying, revolutionary love, um, see no stranger, Valerie Carr. Uh, I just listened to the audio and I was so excited about it that I had to share with like everybody I know. And the idea of revolutionary love itself is, is not new. Right. This is we're talking about a love that is really that is all encompassing. Right. It's love for ourselves. It's love for for our loved ones. Right. But it's also love for our so-called enemies, what she calls opponents. And mm -hmm. and it's very clear to me in, in this time that we're living in that that this is the call, that, that this is what we're all being called to do is is to expand our capacity for loving the other. Mm -hmm. And um, and this book just, um, it just was really profound. And uh, I'm just so grateful to Valerie Kaur for creating this because there's a whole curriculum that goes with it. And there are resources that we're gonna be delving into and utilizing as we take this journey throughout the rest of the year. And um, you know, it's the idea whose time has come. And so I want to let people know, you know, specifically that you all were invited, that I asked you, uh, because I wanted to share this as conversation, like how these ideas apply to our everyday lives. You know, you all in New York City uh, dealing with the COVID situation and, you know, Corinne and I here trying to get this peace building center off the ground and get peace building ideas and principles, yeah. so much of what Valerie is talking about into our institutions right here in Marion County mm -hmm. and also in the larger CSL. So I just think you ladies are brilliant. We're all on the path together, you know, of just yeah. people who really, for me, exemplify love and, and light. And I'm not talking about a sentimental kind of love, but love mm -hmm. that, that transforms. There I go getting all... Ugh. Do that. <laughs> Holy water. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. Holy yeah. water. But yeah. love you, ladies. I love you, ladies. And I thank you. And so I just wanted, um, why did you say yes, Donna? You're taking time out of your day to, to come and have this conversation with us this morning. Because I have a grandchild mm -hmm. and I have children and my neighbors have children and my neighbors have grandchildren. And we borrow this planet from them and their children and their children. And I feel that we have a responsibility to leave it better. And it's better for me because of the, you know, the sacrifices that my family made for me when I was young, they built what we are now. I, you know, as a first generation immigrant, I know what it's like to come from an old way of being. And my grandmother did it differently from what other people said. They, they kept saying, Oh, don't, don't be like that with her because you'll make her be spoiled. But the love that my grandmother infused into me, regardless of what anybody said, changed the way I am and the way I see the world. And I feel that I have a responsibility to do the same. And so any opportunity that I have to be able to pay that forward, I take it. And that's why I'm here. And that's why you're in New York? Yes. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because somebody's got to love on these people. And tons and tons of these amazing people that are working in the healthcare system. I mean, there's, you know, some that aren't all that great, but there are even more that are. 
and they give tirelessly of themselves every single day to people who are vulnerable and we need it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I miss you here, but I'm so glad that you're doing good things. Yeah. Well, it's my heart to help. And so I feel that, you know, I mean, don't get it twisted. I mean, everybody's like, well, you get paid well to do. Yeah, but we also <laughs> walk into the fire too, you know, and away from our family. And every time you kiss them goodbye and get on that plane, you, you know, there's always the possibility of you never returning. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's real. Mm -hmm. That's real. But I will. I'll return. You will. Yeah. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> of course. Because I'm careful that we're PPE. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> you want to take it away, Norma? Since you're up there too. Well, she can't get rid of all the family. Wherever she goes, I seem to always tag along. So there's that. But um, <laughs> what made me say yes to your request to join this panel? Mm -hmm. um, because of who I am, and I don't mean internally and intrinsically as a person, but the demographics of who I am. I am black, female, gay, raised in the South. Mm -hmm. So I've had many opportunities where le love wasn't shown to me. I'll just say it like that. Um, I So I've been on the other side of that, uh, you know, basically the recipient of that lack of love. And I don't like the way that feels. And I think if we can just show the world how to be love, not just feel love, that familial, you know, love that you have for your significant other or your family, but just love of people, you know, that would definitely help everyone, all of us, the whole world. Yeah. You know, it speaks to our vision, doesn't it? Keep As Centers for Spiritual world. Living, we say mm -hmm. we're here to create a world that works for everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, but we keep talking about it. Right. It's yeah. like this vision. And, and it's this vision that who knows when it's going to happen. Could be 20 years from now, could be 200 years from now, could be another 2000. Right. Because Jesus has mm -hmm. been talked about this 2000 years ago. And so has every mm -hmm. other great teacher. And here we are still like one day it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I and I feel like this is the time like it needs to happen that we need we need to not see it as something far off, but mm -hmm. to have it be our way of life. We have mm -hmm. to be who we've been looking for. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Well, you know, I think that we're at a different, you know, we're at, at an impasse right now. We have more opportunity to be able to share to bigger audiences because of the Internet. Yeah, you know, that others didn't have. It's been happening. The movement's been happening. It's just been kind of underground <laughs> this whole time. And now those of us who were the recipients of it, like me or Norma, who had people who stepped up and said, I love you, regardless of being gay and black and whatever, you know, and those people stepped forward and did something. And now we have a chance to be on an even bigger stage. So mm -hmm. it's been happening. People just didn't see it before. Not as often. Yeah. How about you, Corinne? Well, why did I say yes? Well, I didn't say yes. I went, yes, when Cindy <laughs> looked at my phone, saw that test, text message and said, what do you think of Valerie Kaur's revolutionary love? Oh my gosh, I was so excited because uh, a few reasons. I had first, I had seen an interview uh, with Valerie Kaur uh, with uh, and I was so blown away by this woman because she, it's like she had gotten in my head, this idea of compassion and revolutionary love and how that is the change that we need. You know, that, that is the difference. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Because yeah. everybody is yeah. frozen. But me. Your picture is freezing up a little bit, but we're hearing your voice. Okay. Okay. I'll keep going then. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. So that, like I said, Valerie Cower, she, she really embraces uh, what I believe in. And that's one of the reason, like Cindy said, you know, we started the Center for Practical Peace Building, Circle Up, Center for Practical Peace Building, because, you know, all this partisan, all this polarization was not working. And everybody, it's, it, it, 
we can't just keep yelling at each other. I think it's Martin Luther King said, you cannot conquer hate with hate. You can only mm -hmm. conquer hate with love. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm just passionate about. So I'm really happy to be involved in this revolutionary love project. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and thank you again, ladies, for, for saying yes. And, and there are gonna be other, other folks we've invited to the forum as well. So every week it'll be, you know, a different group of, of people, but, but folks, you know, are gonna get to know us because we'll be mm -hmm. having these conversations on screen for everybody. And then after this, there'll be a Zoom conversation for anyone else from the congregation, anyone who happens to be listening and watching to be able to chime in and maybe troubleshoot, talk about how this applies in their lives. And, um, and we'll just really keep the ripple effect going out and out. So um, I want to, let me put a, a screen up here for people to see this um, introduction here, okay? So introducing the idea of revolutionary love. And this is how Valerie uh, defines love here. She says, love is a form of sweet labor fierce, bloody, imperfect, and life-giving, a choice we make over and over again. As labor, love can be taught, modeled, and practiced. Revolutionary love is the choice to enter into the labor for others, for our opponents, and for ourselves in order to transform the world around us. Now, it wasn't actually intentional when I asked this particular group of ladies to be with us. Oh, and Corinne disappeared this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it just so happens that all of us are mothers mm -hmm. as well, right? I mean, we've all um, given birth to, to children and, and it happens to be Valerie's yeah. metaphor, but it goes way beyond, you know, being a parent. But I love the, the metaphor and the idea that, that love, um, there's Corinne, she's back. Hey, Corinne. <laughs> um, Internet. Yeah, it happens. Uh, but anyway, I was just saying about the Valerie's metaphor being the birth metaphor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and that's probably the, the phrase that she said. It was in 2016, and she was speaking at uh, Pastor William Barber's church, and it was after the election. And there was a lot of fear around the election in 2016, just after that. Uh, and with good reason, because we saw a lot of um, a rise in hate crimes and all kinds of things. But anyway, in that, that talk that she did, uh, she, she said, yes, there is darkness, but is this the darkness of the tomb or is it the darkness of the womb? Mm -hmm. And it was so profound, you know, that message went across the globe. I mean, it, it was a viral, uh, mm -hmm. video that she made. I think, I don't know, over 40 million people Oof. have seen that. God yeah. bumps. God bumps, right? Mm -hmm. right? I remember it. Yes. Yeah. You know, and she, she comes from a place of, as I said, it's not a love that's sentimental. That's just about feelings. Mm -hmm. This is a love that that's based in, in action and, and being love for everybody. Right. And it's sometimes fierce. it is fierce. Mm -hmm. It is fierce. And um, and it requires courage. Yes. Right. If you it think does. about the great teachers of history, the great spiritual leaders, uh, Jesus, Buddha, I mean, even more people who are closer to our times, like uh, Martin Luther King Jr. or Gandhi, mm -hmm. you know, they're mm -hmm. preaching about love and oneness and not having hierarchies of people um, got them killed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And just every day, you know, it's so easy to get on the hate train is what I call it. You know, you're with a group of people and, oh, they're hating on the enemy. Well, the opponents, I think, is what we're going to call it. They're, they're hating on the opponents. And when you don't join in, they look at you like, well, what's wrong with you? What do you mean you love them? How can you love them? And then it starts a whole new discussion. Yeah. But yeah. It's, and so you need, to be, you need to be courageous. Sometimes standing up to your friends is, is difficult. 
I think it's the hardest. Yeah. Yeah. The the way she entitled this this whole uh, movement, revolutionary love. That's love that causes action. Yes. You know, when you think of revolution, something's happening. It's not just a feeling. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be great to explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. Me too, because, you know, I've always had people ask me that, you know, how when when you talk about others, how can you just approach them like that? There's no us or them. For me, when I see somebody coming at me with whatever it is their story is, because that's really all it is. I just Mm -hmm. stop and I say, "Okay, tell me your story, because I feel like right now I'm in a moment of listening. And then I stand and I listen to their story. And some people just need to be heard. Exactly. And then once they say their story, then you can say, okay, I hear you. And then, and then move on. that's the love too. You love the person mm-hmm. that's right in front of you. Mm-hmm. And if they're, if you don't agree with their views, let's say um, that they've jumped on the hate train, whatever it is that, that they're doing that you don't agree with, you love that person in front of you. And what do they need? They just need to be heard. You don't have to agree with them. But you still, you love them. And that is, it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, revolutionary love is, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know how I do it? I just kind of imagine them as babies. Yeah. (laughs) It's hard to hate a baby. It's hard to be mad at a baby. (laughs) When I see like a brand new baby that came out and there's this baby before the story. And that's what I love is the little baby inside of them. And I think of their baby eyes when I look at them and their little baby mouth. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great way to do it. That is a great way to I do it. I imagine what they look like as babies and it really changes everything. <laughs> that is a great good. practice. It's a great but, practice. Yeah. yeah, I see, uh, I, I put the face of my, you know, my one of my sons or my daughter, I will put on the, if someone's really upsetting me, I look at them as, okay, put the face of my, my child on that person. And mm-hmm. wow, suddenly I'm a lot more patient. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that really helps. That yeah. helps. Well, I'm going to put up some intentions here. And this is, um, this actually flows out of Valerie's work. Um, the intention of the Revolutionary Love Project mm-hmm. is to define and explore this love as a choice to labor for others, our opponents and ourselves in the pursuit of justice. Gosh, I love that, (laughs) right? Love as a choice to labor for others, our opponents and ourselves. And then to redefine love as more than an emotion, but rather the choice to enter into that labor. And then to explore and reflect on our own understandings and our own definitions of love. And, you know, last year, uh, our whole theme was around uh, just releasing what no longer serves us, right? Letting go of the BS, the belief Mm -hmm. systems that don't serve, Mm -hmm. right? right? And there's a whole lot of BS around love, what it is, right? What it is, Mm -hmm. how do we show it? For something that that we use, a word that we use an awful lot, we don't have a whole lot of good definition about it. Correct. Loving pizza is not the same as loving your <laughs> kid, <laughs> right? Or, you know, loving somebody that harmed you. Mm. Mm. Right, yeah, that's, that's hard. There's where the actual work comes. It's, yeah. And it's work. The you know, love is a choice. It's it's is a, it, it is a choice you make. And it's work. It gets easier. It gets easier each time. Kind of like the same thing with labor. You know, the first time you have a baby, there's this longer process. It's more scary. The body, you know, it it's you labor longer. But the more children a woman has, the easier the labor, the quicker the labor. It's the same thing. The more we exercise this muscle, the more that the knee-jerk reaction goes to love instead of the other way, getting on the hate train. Even when that person is coming at you, they're on the hate train, full flat blast ahead of you, of you, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna just go here. And you automatically drop in. But you have to become aware of your own self when it starts to come up. And then you police yourself. Oh, yes. And the okay. more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yeah, yeah you catch sure. it. 
-hmm. Your awareness increases and you, you see the signs, you catch the signs, you catch yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and it, yeah. isn't that why we're on the spiritual path? Right. Right. right? Yeah. I mean, it's to become yeah. more aware. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Become yeah. enlightened, to become aware, to, to understand ourselves and to know ourselves. And mm -hmm. so, you know, these opportunities as they come up, uh, when we feel less than loving, when we feel less than charitable, when somebody is is on us, <laughs> you know, that's the opportunity. That's the moment to practice. Absolutely. You know, there's there's places or in our lives or situations that we know that we have um, opportunities for growth. Work on those, but it takes a lot of self reflection to actually figure out because we may not even know we have these arenas or areas that we are, say, judgmental. Right. Um, but a lot of uh, self-reflection will bring up a lot of stuff for you if you actually do the work. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think um, I, I'm in this work as much as anybody else is, right? As we go through the year, that we're all going to find our spots. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what I, I want to be able to to do in this forum where we're gonna have multiple people speaking on topics is, you know, like this was a real sticking point for me. How did you get through that? Or, you know, I had this experience and I'm still not over it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's what makes Valerie's story so compelling was she had some really personal stuff. I mean, she, she was sexually assaulted. She was um, really mistreated by a law enforcement officer um, deal, and had physical injuries as a result of these things and was able to move to the other side of it. And, you know, we've all had experiences, each one of us, mm -hmm. right? You don't mm -hmm. get to, through life without having some kind of betrayal, some kind of hurt. Okay. Um, so how do we move through those things most effectively? And not bypassing Right. Because you can go right to forgiveness. You know, oh, I'm not going to feel this or that or, you know, make it all about the other person. But let me put up another definition here. Um, where she talks about revolutionary love engaging all of our emotions. Right. So revolutionary love engages all the emotions. Joy is the gift of love. Grief is the price we pay for love. Oh. Anger protects that which is loved. And then we when we think we've reached our limit, wonder is the act that returns us to love. Mm. Mm. Isn't that profound? Yes. Yeah. I just think it's yeah. so beautiful to realize yeah. you know, that all of the emotions serve a, a purpose and, and have a reason for being. Absolutely. So we, we can learn from all of them, use all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. The other thing I want to bring up here, so so to give people um, an idea of the layout, right? How this is going to go over okay. really the next year. Um, there's ten chapters to this, ten different practices, and she's created this compass. So I'm going to put that up now for people to see. Um, and you can actually use this compass no matter what is going on in your life. If there is a point where you're feeling more the need to love yourself more or the need to love others or you're in a space where there is an opponent and you're trying to figure out how to navigate those waters, um, all of those parts are necessary and important in this definition of love and this revolutionary love. So loving ourselves, only ourselves, is escapism. Right. Loving only our opponents is self-loathing. Loving only others is ineffective. All three practices then make love revolutionary and revolutionary love can only be practiced in community. Mm. All right, so there's a whole lot, a whole lot that statement in those statements. So every month we're going to go through a different aspect of what she talked about. The first one, let me, let me bring that screen back up again. Okay. The first thing we're going to talk about her chapter one is on the idea of wonder. And if you're looking at the, uh, the compass that wheel, it's under the part of loving others. Right. And the practice is see no stranger, 
to see no stranger. And the idea is that we start with wonder. Um, maybe someone has hurt us deeply. Maybe it's an individual, maybe a group of people. Um, you know, how we put people in boxes. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're not in a position to feel empathy for those individuals or even want to love them. But we can start with wonder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And I think that's a really great entryway to come into the conversation. It is a great start. And wonder, you know, when you meet others too, you learn more about yourself. I think she says, uh, you know, see no stranger. You are, uh, you are a part of me that I do not yet know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we learn, you know, the face, is, God's face is on all of us. So every stranger you meet is a face of God, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, but it's, it, it's not an easy thing. And that's what's so brilliant about this, you know, that uh, it, it's not supposed to be easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I don't know. Okay, let me rephrase that. Donna, you said it does get easier over time, and it does. But, mm -hmm. but to love someone who has really hurt you, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's the mistake we make when we talk about love. We think, oh, if I have this idea of love and oneness, that life will be easy. No way. It actually makes it a little bit, I don't want to say harder, but maybe more complicated, just a little more challenging. But in that challenge, we grow. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we evolve, our soul, our soul evolves. So it's, it's a, I'm excited. I, I'm really looking forward to delving into all of this. Mm -hmm. Because I think as a human race, we have a tendency to shy away from or even run from mm -hmm. things that are difficult or not easy. So, right. you know, if someone has done an injustice or hurt our feelings or what have you, it's human nature to just avoid them or hate them or, you know, right. think of something negatively instead of trying to figure out why is this chasm between us? What is it about them or myself that, you know, causes this? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this revolutionary love will probably explore that a little bit or maybe a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's why I love her, her analogy of the birth, because yeah. when you are in labor, it's not easy but it's gonna happen. There's a labor, no matter how you look at it, something's gonna mm -hmm. come forward. And you can either fight the labor and be laboring for hours on end and then eventually get there, or you go with the process itself, breathe through it and allow the body to do what it's gonna do naturally. And then you have it that much quicker. Mm -hmm. Either way, you're gonna go through labor. Right. So yeah. you can breathe through it. <laughs> and just adjust and know that it's the growing pains that need to happen in order for something beautiful to come forward and just keep your eyes on the prize. And the prize is the world that works for everyone. That's that beautiful baby that's coming in the end. And mm -hmm. that's what you have to keep in your mind and know that every single time a contraction shows up, which is that fight, you know, the us versus them, the labor part, mm -hmm. breathe through it, adjust, and allow it to dissipate and go forward. And that's why every time I think about that talk that she had, when she talked about, you know, just push, it was just, ooh, God bumps. Because <laughs> I, absolutely, it's not easy, but your body knows what to do. Yes. The same way your soul knows what to do. It knows how to adjust and how to recognize each other and how to recognize God in each other. We just fight it with our human, you know, design, all that wonderful stuff that we've been taught that says there's right. a us and a them. It's our conditioning. You know, we've the been conditioning. conditioned to our soul knows, like you said, just like our body knows about the labor, our soul knows, our soul mm -hmm. knows how to love. And we've exactly. been conditioned to see the, see the, see the negative, see the differences mm -hmm. and make it the us versus them, you know, self protect. Mm -hmm. And there's a, and, and, and there's a reason, you know, as, as humans have evolved over time too, you know, you, I guess times were, times are still pretty tough, but you know, there is that survival. Mm -hmm. You can still survive and be in love. And so 
Or you can survive together. What's wrong with yes. surviving it together? Right. So when Working you're in the conjunction, in you, yes, yeah. So you love the person in front of you. It's just you, you're not happy with them. They're saying something that that is so offensive to you. So you love them, and you think, "What can I do? Because I love you. How do I? How do I help you survive this? Because you are obviously in pain." Otherwise, you wouldn't be saying these things to me. So you are hurting. You have somewhere in your psyche, somewhere in your life, you you are injured. So how can I help you heal? And then in the end, and then you both heal through that experience. And that yeah. comes from love. Yeah. You, and sometimes you know, there's yeah. nothing you can do to help them heal, but there's something you can do to not make the injury worse. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes that's all you can do. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to put the compass up again so you can see because you're, you're talking about the upcoming, right? What we're going to be talking about. So the start we're is jumping wonder, ahead, right? The start is wonder when we're talking about others and seeing no stranger and learning how to hold grief with other people and fight even on their behalf, right? Mm -hmm. This is a social justice kind of a movement. But then the next part when we're talking about our opponents. You know, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but rage mm -hmm. is in that center circle, right? Rage and listen and reimagine. So, you know, there's a place for anger. Mm -hmm. There's a place for righteous anger. And we just have to know what to do with it, right? right? To do with it and have our safe places to rage. And maybe in the moment where you're being injured or the knee is on your neck is not the moment to wonder about your opponent. But the time to do your own wounds, right, mm -hmm. right, to survive yourself. I mean, Valerie's story, you know, when she eventually did speak to her, um, you know, to her abuser, it was years and years later. I think it was ten or twelve years later that she finally spoke to the person. So we have to honor our own um, journey in that, in tending to the wound, both tending to our own wound, and tend before we tend to the wounds of others. And then the last section of that compass is, there we go, Donna, you said it, breathe and push. And it's, it's cycles, mm -hmm. right? This is the part where we love ourselves and, and remember that just like we have cycles of rest of night and day, we're not always working, mm -hmm. right? We have to take our time to, to rest and rejuvenate and breathe so that we can keep doing the work. Mm -hmm. And the last piece is joy. Mm -hmm. And we can infuse joy through all of it. Like you said, right? Keep your eye on the prize. The reason that we're going, that we go through this is so that we can have that world, as you said, Donna, that works for everyone mm -hmm. so that everybody can feel loved and appreciated and be able to express mm -hmm. who they are. Yeah. And that wonder, I mean, coming back to that wonder, Cindy, I mean, we're born knowing how to be in awe of the world and to be in awe of each other. And you put a bunch of babies together, little toddlers together, they're just looking at each other and wanting to know and curious. And you look different from me, so let me touch your hair and I'll touch your hair. And it's that wonder. It's not like, a, oh my God, I hate you. It's yeah, a, right. you're different, but wow, look how cool. This is so different from me. And that's the part that's conditioned out of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the part now it, the more and more and I think what's going to happen is the more and more the generations start to turn over is the more and more we'll have more of us having these discussions with our kids and grandkids and their kids and grandkids and before you know it, we will create that world for work that works for everyone that says that we don't beat the wonder out of our children and that yeah. they keep that wonder because it changes everything yes Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we've got some questions here before we go offline here. We've got lots of people with us today, and I'm hoping yeah. that at least some of these folks are going to join us on the Zoom afterwards so we can have an actual conversation here. Let's see. Margaret Gilman, we practice to gain understanding and wisdom that cultivates courage to open to strangers and become available to wonder about each other. Yeah. You know, isn't it one of the first things that we learn as kids? Mm -hmm. Don't talk to strangers. Yep. Right? It's one of the first things we teach our kids. I taught my kids. Right? right? Don't talk to strangers. 
Well, there's that survival, you know, you, that, that, that's a part of it. It's very real. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go into all those little, you know, we have a month. We're going to talk about wonder for a whole month. So we're going to hit it from all those different angles and then we'll move on to the next topic. And um, uh, like I said, I'm just I'm very excited about it and what it's going to do for not just our community, but the ripple effect. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. For all of right. us individually. And, and as we're out there, you know, with our families and people who are on the other side of the political spectrum and, you know, let's have vegans and carnivores and Democrats and Republicans and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Appreciating one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it yeah. Happen. Margaret, where, where Margaret was saying that to overcome our conditioning, to re have reconditioning. I like that. Reconditioning. Yes. Yeah. Reconditioning. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Let me see if there's anything else I want to add on here. So maybe a little kind of a recap there that revolutionary love is not a feeling but it's it's a labor it's a doing it's it's a being mm -hmm. and because this idea of revolutionary love is a framework and a set of practices not just an emotion or a feeling it can be learned it can be taught it can be practiced and it can be shared and then we talked about this revolutionary love requires us to attend to our joy Right. In a climate of anxiety and alienation, how do we cultivate wellness and joy in our bodies and in our homes? These are questions that we'll be asking ourselves in the upcoming weeks and months. And then the idea that revolutionary love is for everyone, that we center our attention and care on those members of our society who are most vulnerable. Um, but all are welcome, every one of us. And all are welcome to join us in this process. So. I'm just gonna invite people to invite their friends to watch or you know, share it with folks as we go along and feel free, like read the book. Definitely read the book. Watch uh, Valerie's TED Talk. It's <laughs> called Three, Three Lessons of Revolutionary Love in a Time, a of, time rage. of Rage. That's a great title. Mm -hmm. it is a, it's a great TED Talk. It's only about 20 minutes, maybe 22, something like that. Um, and the way she presents it just draws you into her story. Mm -hmm. it just, is it possible amazing. to put the link for the TED Talk in, in the, maybe the comment chat? Yeah, you know, well, what we can do, too, is put it on our Facebook, you know, on CSLO Cala Facebook oh. page. Oh, and there we go. Included in Let's the open newsletter. the newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. Put that so you newsletter. had the book cover, too, didn't you, Corinne? You're, you're reading the actual book? Yeah, um, it's a fantastic book. A fantastic Wonderful. Well, thank you, ladies. I'm really excited. Um, excited about the diversity we're going to have even within our panels. So some yes. might not be able to join us, Donna, but your daughter is going to be with us. Mm -hmm. Yay, the mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes I'm, I'm excited about having a Lori, you know, having a 20 something and, you know, right. just having a lot of different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get some guys on here. That would be awesome. Yeah. Let's hear yeah. from our men. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, for sure. So, yeah. Anybody want to say anything to wrap up? Hmm. What do you want to add before we close out? It's Send me lots and lots of energy. And read the book. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. I'm tired. Donna. Oh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Donna, absolutely. <laughs> definitely it's doing that. Hours. It's yeah. a lot of hours, but it's a, it's definitely a labor of love and just being with these people in these mm -hmm. communities. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh, these people are incredible. The New York health system, the people who work here are just amazing and they just open their hearts and homes to us. It's shower us, shower us with lots of love and appreciation is what they do. And oh, my gosh, I can't say enough about these people. They're just incredible. Mm. Yeah. And that makes That's the labor wonderful. easier, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah they're loved, right? Mm -hmm. That and, and pizza. Loved. Pizza makes the labor. <laughs> <laughs> New York pizza makes the labor. That one. <laughs> um, Since we're on love, I, I want to, you know, extend a, a thank you and uh, appreciation for all the love that's being sent uh, our way and our son's way. You know, because of his motorcycle accident, yeah. it's been tremendous. You know, mm -hmm. his friends, our friends. You know, he, he is truly loved. He's a very, mm -hmm. very careful young man. Mm. Yeah. You know, for people who don't know, 
I want to just let them know that Norma's son had a motorcycle wreck a few, how, it wasn't a week ago. Tuesday evening. Tuesday Mm -hmm. evening. And it was pretty serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's still in the ICU. Yeah. But he was in good physical condition Mm -hmm. when it happened. So lots of broken bones. Well, basically they had to, I think, rebuild his patella. Mm. Well, no, not patella. Pat, pelvis. 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 Those oh, okay. words. And I'm a massage therapist. Go get this. <laughs> Big difference between your patella and your pelvis. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're sending him lots of love and sending you yes. love too. Yes. It's hard as um, to not be able to be there. I know. Yeah. It's okay. You know, he has um, wonderful support from his life partner, Emily, and she has been by his side the entire time. And of course, doctors and nurses that have been just wonderful and keeping us updated and telling us every step of the way what's happening. And, and she you know, the, us every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the best part, honestly, is just the human body and the way the body works. He doesn't remember anything about the accident because wow. he went into shock and the body mm-hmm. just doesn't remember. And mm-hmm. how awesome is it that we are we have that mechanism that the brain just kind of checks out when something traumatic like that happens. And Mm. all he remembers is just waking up in the hospital. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. All right. Anything from you, Corinne, before we close Uh, up? Well, just a comment. I know Lita is asking if uh, we have the book at CSL Ocala. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, but we we could. I I know you could get it, you know, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. You can, you can get it there. Uh, if you get it on Amazon Smile, you can do a donation every time you use Amazon Smile to see a fellow Oh, yes, good. You know, we, I need to put that back in the newsletter because that smile is uh, is wonderful because especially mm-hmm. during COVID, all the Amazon orders. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm not sure if we're set up for Smile yet. And I just right. sent out the ValerieCord.com if you want to go on there and Okay. And look up the program for those who want to look it up, and then um, maybe someone can find our um, link for the Zoom call afterwards. So, I guess that's going to wrap us up, at least this portion of it. And um, I'm looking forward to next week. So let me put the banner across the bottom here for uh, for those who. Um, love this work who for those who want to support the center for spiritual living financially of course we can always use your support uh things were a little lean last month um i think uh we'll 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 address that in the zoom conversation but anyway if you'd like to give to csl ocala you can do it via text to tithe we've made it super simple so the number is 352 320-5110 320-5110 and what you do is text from your phone and plug in the amount of money that you want to donate to the center and it goes right from your account to ours. It's super easy. <laughs> so let's see and we'll do a little affirmation but I'm going to we'll see you on the other side on Zoom ladies. Yeah, well I won't be able to join because I only have one hour for lunch. So. All right honey well we're sending you lots of love. I might just pop in and say hi real quick and then have to pop back out but you know just know that my heart is connected. Yes yes terrific. All right it looks like yeah. <laughs> I think my I think my mouse is dead. Okay. Because I can't get anything off the screen right now. <laughs> oh no. The arrow, the arrow is stuck. And I don't even know okay. how to end the broadcast now. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll just stay. <laughs> and well, the oh, Zoom no, link, someone, we're, someone was looking for the Zoom link. I can't. Can you? somebody else put the Zoom in? Because I can't do anything with my mouse right now. And it's here. It's not doing anything. The battery must be dead. I don't even know how to end the broadcast. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I, and I, uh, well, oh, I, I don't know about that, but I know the... And I cannot get into, I'm reading the chat, but I can't write on the chat. I don't know if Donna and Norma, if you guys know how to do that. <laughs> no, it's honestly because um, Cindy's okay. the host. I'm the gotcha. host. And I'm back. I just, I, I, yeah, it's a battery. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I just fiddled with it a little bit and it came back up. So let me take you Yay. off. Okay. Oh, and it's gone again. 
Dang it. Okay, well, wait a minute. I'm putting on the Zoom, uh, the Zoom number. Yeah, if you can seven, do that. Six, eight, mm. seven. Yes, apparently I need a battery. Mm -hmm. Did that come yeah. through? Had it for a split second there. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to have to just uh, pray out, I think. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron <laughs> yeah, put the Zoom up. Aaron. Oh, did Aaron do it? Okay, good, because I yeah, was trying Aaron, to. Aaron put it in. Good job. Uh, take us all out, so we'll just pray out together, and then I'm going to have to figure out how to turn this off so I can go into Zoom. <laughs> yes, so, and the password is spiritual. Right? Yes, the password is spiritual. Password is spiritual. I think you can use the arrows on your on your keyboard. I I don't know. I can't do anything right now. Oh, technology is so much fun. <laughs> Just goodness gracious, there's always something. <laughs> always no, something. there's not. No, there's not. <laughs> It's not always something. <laughs> in this moment, there's something, and I can't. There's something in this moment. <laughs> in this moment. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's another opportunity for growth, right? Exactly. Um, we're in the fog, Cindy. You're in the fog. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll pray out together, right? Okay, yeah. we'll do it together. Mm. The light of God surrounds, surrounds us. us. The love of God holds us. Pulls us. The power of the God, power God, God protects us, us and, and the, the presence, presence of God, God watches us over us. Wherever, wherever we, are, we are, God, God is, and, all and all is well. Is well. Love you, ladies. I will see Love you. I'm going to get a battery and, and hopefully see you on Zoom. I don't even know how to turn this thing off now. <laughs> Just <laughs> close the, please. Down. If you can close the, um, no. I don't okay. know how to do it. I'm using That's arrows here. Leaving. And maybe it'll, I'm hmm. leaving. Good night. I'll, yes. All right. Bye, <laughs> see you at Zoom. We'll see you on Zoom in a bit. I'm see you, Donna. You. you can go in and <laughs> say hi to people. <laughs> I'm going to go get a battery and figure this out. Jeez. Okay. It's, it's okay. We still love you, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> still nothing. See ya. <laughs> I'll be back when I find a battery. Okay.